Welcome to the Sponsored Rider Club Podcast, your guide to motorsport sponsorship. Here's your host, Josh Weesey. Welcome to this episode of the Sponsored Rider Club Podcast, which is powered by Amsoil. I get this question a lot. People say, why do you do this show? What's your drive behind it? And honestly, it's because I love racing. I love business. I love power sports. This is a perfect mixture of all those things. And guess what? Amsoil loves those things as well. So we've come together to help deliver this advice to you at no cost to you. All you have to do is listen, take massive action, and the results will come. Now, I want to tell you a little bit more about the partnership that we have with Amsoil. It is extending into the Heydays event, which is coming up September 8th and 9th. So you're going to see me in the Amsoil booth doing a little bit of podcasting there. There's also going to be a ton of other things that they have in the booth. So Amsoil has a pretty big spread at Heydays. So I really encourage you to come over there and check them out. It's another testament to their dedication to the motorsports industry, in this case specifically the snowmobiling industry. I wouldn't partner with the company that wouldn't have commitment like that to the industry. So it's really cool that they are going to be there in full force. I'm also going to be at the HMK booth doing a little bit of podcasting there. So I highly encourage you to come to both booths, check it out, ask questions specifically about Amsoil there. There's going to be a lot of reps that can answer those questions for you. I hope to see you there. Okay, today we have two guests on the show. We have Mike and Danielle Gardner. Now, before I get into their interview, there's a few other things I want to cover with you. I would love to get your feedback. I say this on every show, and guess what? I'm going to keep saying it. I want you to head over to iTunes and leave a rating and review. That does wonders for the exposure of the show, which then allows us to keep making the show and then keep bringing amazing guests on the show. So head over to iTunes, leave that rating and review. Also, subscribe. Whatever podcast player you use, it's critical for you to subscribe because that way you don't miss any of our upcoming guests. You don't rely on yourself to remember when a show comes up or follow the social media feed when I remind you that the shows come up. It's going to come to your phone, download directly. So subscribe. You aren't going to want to miss our upcoming shows. We actually have Keegan Kincaid lined up. And also at the Heydays event, we're going to be doing some recording there. So we'll have some special shows coming as a result of that. Now, this episode is also sponsored by six awesome companies. We have Solderweld. They produce game-changing metal bonding technology. TopThePodium.com. They're experts in motorsports sponsorship. Bold Racing. They're a family race team. And they provide GSP XTV axles. Armor Coat. They simplify your cleaning process. They also produce a, an amazing clothing line called Never Lift Racing. Then there's Crash Addict Industries. They provide human protection and extreme racing products. And then Racing Addicts, they are providing a whole new spin on networking and motorsports sponsorship. I also want to give a quick shout out to some of our other partners, including MBRP Power Sports, HMK USA, Sudboy Traction, GSP XTV, and One Stop Performance. Without further ado, let's hop in. Today, I'm really excited about this one. We've got a duo, a, a duet, a double trouble. I don't know what else we want to call it. We got Danielle and Mike Gardner on the show. So really excited to, to do this, this uh, double take. But I want to kind of start off with you two giving us a little bit of an intro about yourself. So Danielle, we'll start with you. Tell us about yourself, and then we're going to let Mike come in after that. I'm 27, born and raised in Orange County, California. Uh, I actually didn't grow up with doing anything to do like in the desert. I grew up skiing a lot and kind of like horseback riding and school sports and stuff. So I never got into the whole industry and racing until I met Mike when I was like 20 years old. Um, but yeah, and then just things from there kind of took off and I just found a new passion and awesome people and families and now here we are <laughs> yeah that's awesome so that's what seven years or so yeah. uh yeah yeah he bought his first razor i think like a year into the relationship he raced for a year i kind of just like supported him and stood on the sidelines and then 
after that, I got the opportunity to get my own car and I started racing a local series, the dirt series. And then kind of from then on, it just like it took off, but in a good way. Uh, crazy, but fun. <laughs> oh, perfect. Well, Mike, what about you? Let's uh, let's kind of hear your quick intro and then we're going to dive into all the good details. But go ahead and kick that off. Perfect. <laughs> well, I'm uh, 30 years old, born and raised in Orange County. Um, let's see that I've dipped into mountain biking, motocross and then the razor stuff. And pretty much all I do on a day to day basis is work for the family business sitting in the passenger seat of the truck, which gives me a lot of time to be on social media mm. and calling sponsors and <laughs> doing all that good stuff. So, uh, so yeah, I'm excited to do this podcast and thank you for having us on. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. There's, there's not many, you know, husband, wife duos out there. There's a few of them. There's a few of them and not many of them. I mean, I'm thinking there's you two, there's Kristen and Wayne Matlock. There's Corey and Jason Weller. And then the Romos, I guess their whole family, you know, is into the thing. Yeah. But uh, there's not a ton of the husband-wife combo, so it's it's a pretty unique situation. I think it's pretty cool, too, so I'm, I'm excited to dive into that a little bit deeper, too. Yeah. Um, well, what I want to do, though, is, is use Heat One to kind of unpack your stories a little bit. You know, like, Danielle, we'll, we'll start actually talking about you, but you talked a little bit about how you got into the industry initially – um, it, you know, and I guess how you got to even introduced to motorsports, but I don't know. Let's dive into some of the details. Like what happened in those seven years that, that took you from then to, to now? Yeah. Um, when I met Mike, he was all into mountain biking, riding dirt bikes. I mean like everything. And he, we would go on desert trips all the time and he tried numerous times to teach me how to ride a dirt bike, which I was terrible at. <laughs> So, like, one of the trips we went on, he decided to rent a Polaris Razor. And he called me. He's like, hey, we're going on a desert trip. I got this cool vehicle. You can go on it with me. It's like a dune buggy, kind of. And that way, you don't have to sit at camp all day, like, while we're all out riding. I was like, all right, cool. So, we go on the trip. Both of us fell in love with it. It was a blast. Um, I want to say, like... A couple weeks after that, or maybe a month. A couple months, I think. A couple months, yeah. He ended up going down to a local dealership by a Mission Motorsports and buying his first Polaris Razor 900. Nice. Had that for like a month. But I mean, he grew up in racing and everything, so it was only a matter of time before he wanted to like get into that. So he started racing and I just kind of supported him and I, you know, I loved it. Everyone was super nice. I would do like practices with him, stuff like that. And towards the end of his season, I went to dinner with my dad and my stepmom and they saw how much I loved it and like how, you know, into it I was. And they asked if I had the opportunity, would I want to race? And I was like, yeah, of course. And So my dad kind of asked me, he's like, all right, well, if you can find a car, like there's a uh, race, there was a dirt series race coming up in like two weeks. He's like, if you can find a car at this price, we'll do it. And I was like, okay. But I think he kind of said it to me, like not really thinking (laughs) that I could get the car or find one. So we go on Facebook, Instagram, uh, wherever Craigslist, and we found Cody Raiders. He had his. 570 up for sale uh went down there ended up getting that and two weeks later i was entered into my first race i was freaking out i had like two i had to borrow one of yeah i had to borrow one of cody's old fire suits i had like my converse on an old moto helmet and we zip tied a window net up and i was like all right like this is it nice <laughs> and um i mean since then, I just went out like, and got second place in your first race. I, yeah, I got second in my first race. What were you? What? Why I, not first? Come on, first race, first that's place. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was, I was content with second place. That's I was pretty, like, I made it this good. far. I got past all people. <laughs> but um, but yeah, and I like immediately fell in love with it. And then from then on, it kind of just like 
took off. I entered into the rest of the dirt series races. I've done Terracross, Lucas Oil Regionals, Works. Um, you know, I have a couple of championships and podiums and it, I mean, I don't know. I just, I found something that I love and enjoy doing so much. And I've never really like had something like this in my life before. So it's kind of a cool feeling. Well, not to brag, but I'm pretty sure that if I ever do a first race, I'm definitely going to get first place. Not to brag. <laughs> oh, that, All right. We'll, that's, that's, we'll make a little wager and you let me know when you go out. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, I think, I mean, I, I, I would, I have like this weird thing inside of me where I want to do, because uh, I'm not a racer. I've never done anything like that, but I do ride all the time, but trail riding, which is like, whatever. But, uh, uh, I've, I've wanted to do the, uh, snowmobile, like I 500 or some sort of endurance snowmobiling race. And, uh, oh, I've been thinking be about it, but I mean, the key there is like, if I just survive and finish, I would be pretty excited, <laughs> you know, and, yeah. like I would, I, I have a, I have an ambitions elsewhere in my life, but definitely if I got into a race, I'd be like, just finish, just finish, just finish. Uh, I would definitely yeah, not be in first place. <laughs> Yeah. Or second. <laughs> no, I, I got in the car and it was like something just switched in me. And I was just like, I mean, pro- over half the jumps, I even to this day, like when I go over certain whoop sections and jumps and stuff, I'm cracking up laughing as I'm going over them. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, He's a little crazy. Yeah. <laughs> no, but I mean, I, I was joking around a little bit, but I, I, I'm very impressed. Um, you know, like you said, you're able to go out there and just knock it out in your first race um i i've heard a couple people say that in the show they're like yeah i just picked up a dirt bike and then one or whatever it is i'm like how is that possible but i think it's just you got it in your blood and it's it is what it is yeah that's good stuff uh well mike what about you i mean let's hear a little bit more about your whole story so um started racing BMX when I was like five years old and did that for a few years, kind of went off and rode dirt jumps. We had a huge dirt jump place by our house, like not even a quarter mile away. So my whole childhood revolved around me going to school, not really doing any homework (laughs) and uh, (laughs) going straight to the dirt jumps. And I don't know, 15 years old, I entered my first race. I won on a mountain bike and then started doing that for a couple of years. I mean, not even like full time, just whatever I could make it to, I would do. And then I, it almost got too serious mm. and I, uh, I kind of got burned out of it pretty quick. So I was continue riding motorcycles, and mountain bikes for fun, kept getting hurt, kept getting hurt. Mm-hmm. And then right around the time I met Danielle, I'm 23 and, Kind of, I'm about seven concussions deep. Yeah. <laughs> and like, you know, maybe one of these Polarises will be fun. And, you know, you heard how we got into the Polaris thing and pretty much just, it went from my brother sitting in the passenger seat for the first four or five races and work. Blowing out all four shocks on one race. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We, we would go through all the shocks because we were in a stock, sh- we were in a stock car with yeah. no valving. Yep each like 230 pounds yeah we're both big boys and we entered the production 1000 class which used to be pretty steep and we were getting top fives and everybody was like dude you need to get your brother out of the car you can you have no idea how much help that would give you if you just lost the weight yeah so we did that and started getting seconds and thirds and firsts and 2015 won a championship um, 2016, I got a pretty bad concussion and sat out most of the year and then came back and I won what was the biggest cash prize that, you know, at that point right. in a Polar or a side-by-side race at the Sand Sports Super Show Stadium Super Trucks. And I won like five grand and some bonus money from sponsors. And that was pretty much my, Pretty much my last race before taking some time off, getting married, and buying a house and all mm-hmm. that stuff. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, that's but uh, that's a cool story there too. Uh, it had to feel good too getting that cash, right? Like this is legit. You know what I mean? Like this is a real this is real money right here. 
you know what's crazy is so the not only like you get a plaque like yeah. we're used to getting these trophies and you get this plaque that's probably sorry i'm saying the b word <laughs> um <laughs> that's uh you know it's like 50 pounds i can hardly hold the thing over my head and then lobby goes okay you got first place i'm like yeah and he tells his assistant to take him to the trailer and hand him five thousand dollars in cash and congratulations thanks for coming out i was like what yeah no check nothing he handed me a wad of cash really i was stoked man i was like <laughs> i've never just been handed five grand cash before so sounds yeah, like you were like uh, at a legal like cockfight or something or like pit bulls or yeah something. no kid. like oh here's the no here's the pot uh, you know out of my out of my hat <laughs> <laughs> well, and with all like with racing pro and doing sponsor stuff, we usually have to sign that. What is it? A W two or a W nine. Yeah, yeah. And so I'm just kind of waiting. Like, what do I do there? Hopefully no one from the IRS is listening, <laughs> but <laughs> actually, um, but yeah, I'm with the IRS and that's the entire point of this interview. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, here, I'm just going to radio. Up. We got him. Yeah. Uh, just stay yeah, where you're at right now. Don't leave. Don't leave where you're where you're at. Just stay on the line. Uh, someone will be there to. to All right. Speak with you. <laughs> but yeah, it was pretty cool, and that's uh, yeah. I mean, that's pretty much as far as racing goes. That's pretty much it. And Danielle got back into it. She started a couple months ago. Yeah. And yep. Yeah, that's getting cool. we're getting feet wet again and getting ready for 2019. So yeah. the sponsor hunt is starting already. Yeah, yeah definitely. 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 Well, I mean, that's that's why we do this show too, is to talk about the whole sponsorship, the journey, the the ups, the downs, the the pursuits. You know, the, it's good stuff. Um, and actually, you know, I would love to understand right now who are some of your current partners, current sponsors that you're working with. Um, and I'm assuming if you're pursuing other ones, then maybe in the future we'll be able to talk about some some new ones. But uh, you know, where are you sitting at right now? Well, we have uh, quite a few. Well, I should say Danielle, me as kind of her manager slash, uh, I don't know what you'd call me, but yeah. Manager sounds good. Public (laughs) relations officer, you know, ambassador. I don't know. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, Well, she just got a couple months ago picked up by Polaris. Mm -hmm. So that was pretty big. And then um, shortly after that, we got teamed up with sdr motorsports Mm -hmm. and they're building the car and making a perfect little race car and we've been with kmc wheels for a couple years rigid industries we've been with for probably i I don't know five six years yeah walker and same thing gbc Mm -hmm. same thing um prp seats we've been with forever assault we've been with forever um magic graphics we've been with them a few years and tyler over there is awesome yeah him and his wife both they're so cool they sent us like sped up videos of them putting the wraps on our car yeah, yeah they're fun. they're great yeah. uh liquid molly for fluids and lubricants and additives sparko and um obviously my dad's company gm uh gmh motorsports and mm-hmm. danielle's dad's company spectrum mechanical so we got a list of them but Most of them we've been with for multiple, multiple years. It's a lot easier that way when it comes time to do the sponsorship stuff. If you have the relationship and you don't really have to hunt much, it makes life 10 times easier. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And that's, we talk about this a a lot on the show, attract and retain sponsors. You know, sometimes you can get someone to come on board for a year or for, for one product but what can you do for the next the next round? That's the harder piece sometimes. Uh, yes, that's, so that's good. True. And it's it's interesting. I don't know if if you're in the same boat, but you look back and you're like, wow, time just flies. Like, you know, for example, I've I haven't been doing this show. I started December uh, of 2016, and just shortly after that, uh, Jeff Vanistall of TopThePodium.com picked up the show uh, as a sponsor, and I, I was like. I, I, I didn't even think it was an option, you know, and he offered. I was like, mm-hmm. wow, this is great. I, I was like, I guess it makes sense as an option. That's kind of what the show is about, is attracting no, entertaining it's sponsors. Perfect. But it's been almost two years. I mean, not, not quite two years, but it's been like 20 months. And I'm like, yeah. man, it feels like I just I just talked to him about this whole thing. And 
and now it's, we've been partners for a long time. It's just crazy how that time flies. And then you start looking at other folks that came on after that. It's been like 18, 17 months that like Bold Racing's been on board and Armor Coat's been on for a year. And so I, I don't know. It's it's just nuts how time flies like that. You know. yeah, yeah, it's weird when you're so involved. I mean, you know, it's like a you know a second full time job yeah. and so much going on and so much you know your wheels are turning so much in your mind it's like the days just fly by before you know it there goes a year there goes two years it's, mm-hmm. it's a good thing and a bad thing in my opinion no i completely agree and with that note uh danielle actually has been recently working with top the podium too yeah yeah i just talked to jeff uh a week ago a couple of weeks ago and He's helping me out and getting me a sponsor deck and getting that all dialed in. And I'm beyond excited because just looking at like their samples and things that they've done before, I mean, it's legit and it's super professional. And I'm like, I keep bugging him. I'm like, when am I going to get it? I just want to send it to people. (laughs) Yeah. yeah. You know, you just been, been with us. uh, 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 He's been on the show twice now and obviously been sponsoring for a while. And you really have to, like, pay attention to some of the work that he's done to see how talented he really is. You know, and he, he also oh, yeah. works uh, at Can-Am. He's a uh, global – dang it, I'm going to mess it up – global community manager at Can-Am. So he does all the social media and a lot of the creatives. And this stuff is, like, amazing. He does this thing with the Can-Ams where, like, he'll take a normal video and then he'll make it look like your – like the vehicle is – um, crossing over an Instagram feed, like if you were just sitting there scrolling, oh, yeah. it is so. I I don't even know. I have no idea how he does it, but it'll like it looks like you're looking at your normal screen, like oh that's a cool little video, and then it jumps to the next thing. Like how did he do that? How did he make that video? It's so neat. Um, oh, wow, that's crazy. Yeah, you'll have to look at it. Yeah. I know I'm I'm not doing it justice the way I'm describing it, but he has it on his Facebook. <laughs> Uh, and I think if you just see any of the gen- the, the K&M stuff that's out there, you can see it. But it's so cool. Um, and then he did my my what my new website. We just launched it. Like so today we're recording. It's August 9th. I think I launched on August 1st or August 2nd, and it looks oh, sweet. Wow. Um, you know he did the whole thing, and all I did was just added pictures to it when the time was right. So yeah, and that took forever for me to do. But <laughs> yeah, no. He's awesome. He gave me, you know, like a list of questions, what I specifically wanted in there, and then just had me send him some photos and videos. And I mean, like, I was thinking it was going to be way more than that, but I'm like, I can't wait to see it. I'm just like, when am I going to get it? Yeah, having (laughs) having help like that. I mean, like coming from the mountain bike days, I there, I don't think there was anything like that ten, fifteen years ago, five years ago, where it these the younger generation and even us like it's so beneficial having this at our fingertips and if people take advantage of it it is huge for them yeah and especially like trying to get companies that are outside of off-road and racing and like this to be able to send to them it literally shows them who i am what i've done what i'm looking for pictures videos you know it's like it's everything all in one file and for some companies who aren't aware of you know the industry or really what it's all about it's like the perfect thing for them because it's one click you look at it and you're like oh okay like I understand who this person is and what they want from me or you know what we can do together yeah and I'm glad that you said you know that there's people out there that can help Jeff is one of those people um, you know there obviously there's lots of other companies out there that can help you do things and yes, the majority of the time it's going to cost some amount of money. Most people aren't going to do the work for free. Um, you might have a friend sure. or a relative that's an expert in these things, and they can help out and make really good, uh, really good products for you. But you know, sometimes it helps to say, "Look, I'm I'm going to give up the control of this. Let's say in this instance, the resume. I'm going to let somebody else take the wheel, and it's going to look amazing. Like at that point, now they are the expert. They're actually doing it." Uh, it's hard to give that control up, but once you do and you realize that now you've got this much time left to do the things you're really good at, like 
you know, maybe it's working out more or maybe it's, you know, you get another two hours of testing in on your vehicle or two hours of build time or whatever it is like that then helps you your entire program. It starts compounding on, on, on each other. Absolutely. And the, the way I look at it too, it's like, I'm not a great fabricator. I'm not really good at welding. Mm-hmm. I'll let a professional. Do. Right. Right. And on, in the same sense, I'm not great with web design, graphic design. You let the professional do it, you know, right. and it's, it, I don't, I love it. I think it's fantastic. Yeah. It's definitely worth it. And just, it, I think it kind of takes you to that next level of professionalism as well. Yes. And it just makes, you know, people that you're trying to get sponsors from, it just makes them look at you, you know, that much more seriously because you put the time and the money into making something for them, um, you know, just to just as like a, hey, this is me just as a beginning, you know, like that alone shows your, you know, your effort into what you're doing. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. Well, we're going to actually dive in a lot deeper into those soul sponsorship talk in a minute, but I need to pause briefly to thank the sponsors for this podcast. Are you ready for an entirely new approach to motorsports sponsorship and networking? I'm assuming the answer is yes, because why else would you be listening to this podcast? We are excited to be teaming up with Racing Addicts. They are legitimately questioning and challenging the status quo on sponsorship. Once you become part of their network, they will first off sponsor you directly, but then also help link you with other companies who are dedicated to making motorsports better and providing you with additional sponsorship opportunities. This is crazy stuff. If you're excited about this, then join the club. Your next step is to head over to the social media and find Racing Addicts, give them a follow, and stay tuned for what's next. I hear it constantly from racers that A good suspension setup is absolutely critical for performance, and that's why I'm going to talk to you next about bold racing and suspension. Now, it's really critical to understand your suspension, and there's so many intricacies with the valving and the the shims and all this crazy equipment that you need to actually you know, rebuild and properly set up your suspension that it's really important if you're ready for that next level of, of performance to partner with an awesome suspension company. Now, Bold Racing is that company. They're not only specialists with their suspension setups, but they also partner with companies that produce amazing custom components. And on top of that, they're a family race team. They actually race themselves, so they really understand the type of beating that your vehicle and your shocks can take. So what I want you to do is give them a call and just chat with them. Talk to them about suspension. Their number is 702 706-5354. If you're not ready for a phone call, go ahead and shoot them an email, bold.racing at yahoo.com. What's up, everyone? This is Mike Pascarella, founder of Desert Vets Racing. When the team goes racing, we always have our solder weld products with us. Keeping the cars in the fight is our number one concern. With solder weld, we can do that. Solder weld is a leading company in the U.S. for aluminum repair. They specialize in radiator repair on the fly. If you're stuck in the middle of the trail or a race with a whole new radiator, oil pan, or canister, or even an aluminum line, you can fix it right then and there in a matter of minutes with their Ally Soul Aluminum Repair Rods and Flux. It's the only complete and lasting fix in the off-road community. Solder Weld's new UTV off-road kits fit in every ride and are easy to access on the fly. Solder Weld continues to make a huge positive impact on this industry. So I really encourage you, get in there now go to solderweld.us check out their products because this stuff is changing the game safety is our overriding priority i hear it all the time but i have to ask myself is it though is that the first thing we think of is that the first thing you think of Over the past couple of years, we've seen the performance of production UTVs increase, I don't know, somewhere around 350%. 
that means these machines give us a lot more opportunity to have fun and win races, but it also unfortunately gives us new opportunities to crash. And that's why we have partnered with Crash Addict Industries. The owner, Travis Pointer, became very accustomed to crashing early in his career. He saw it as inevitable, and he set out to make the process safer. With a passion for racing, welding, and engineering, Crash Attic Industries now produces full cage and other protection systems intentionally designed to protect you during an accident on the track. They also offer a line of human protection products through their vendors. Do this for me at this point. If you're racing with a stock cage right now, please go check out CrashAddict.com and see, at least just see what they have to offer. Even if you choose to go with a different company, please, please, please make safety your overriding priority. I am constantly asking the guests of this podcast how they attract and retain sponsors. And on almost every single occasion, somebody gives an example of a resume. A rider or a racer resume is extremely important to your overall sponsorship pitch and proposal. And it's tough to do. I mean, it's not really the easiest thing. Anybody can go through and put together a resume, so don't get me wrong there, but it's really difficult to get something that's like unique and different and stands out. And that also is something that can be put across multiple platforms. Well, that's one of the things that I want to talk to you about next is how topthepodium.com can actually help you build a race or rider resume that can be used on multiple platforms. I'm talking like website, PDF, you know, something you can print off that's interactive, that looks fantastic, it looks absolutely professional. Well, that's because it's made by a professional. This is the type of thing that's going to set you apart from the crowd and that's going to position you for a strong sponsorship proposal. So what I want you to do next is go to topthepodium.com. And if you have a question, there's a little chat icon that pops up on the side of the screen when you go to topthepodium.com. And you can go ahead and type your question right there. Jeff Vanistall, he is the owner of Top the Podium. He's going to be able to respond to you directly. So check it out. What's up, everyone? George Hamill here. As a professional off-road racer, I'm always seeking a competitive advantage. My vehicle, tools, and products must perform flawlessly for me to excel on the racetrack. I only use products that help me succeed and provide me an edge over my competition. One critical area that affects racing is weight, and this is certainly true for UTV racing. Mud, dirt, and grease can accumulate under the vehicle and on the tires, decreasing speed and performance. So in 2017, we partnered up with Neverlift Racing and their amazing product, Armor Coat. This spray-on product performs. Not only does it reduce the effect of mud while racing, but it also makes cleanup quicker and gives my vehicle a professional appearance on race day. Armor Coat Spray is a critical part of our race program. Grab some today. You'll be amazed. Whether you are a professional racer like George or a weekend warrior like myself, Armor Coat can make a huge difference in your life. Armor Coat from Neverlift Racing is a unique solution formulated to help prevent mud, clay, and ice from sticking to the surfaces that you treat. This cuts your cleanup time in half while keeping your machine looking new. So I want you to go check out ArmorCoatProducts.com for the latest off-road care products. All right, uh, welcome back. We're now in Heat 2. And that's where we really get in the nitty gritty details of the real reason why you're here, which is talk about sponsorship tactics and strategies, how to attract and retain sponsors. And we're going to kind of go back and forth on this. You know, we're going to talk about a bunch of good stuff, but I want to kind of hear examples from both of you. We'll, we'll, we'll bounce back and forth. But, you know, first off, I would love to understand an example, and maybe both of you have an example of how you built a relationship with a sponsor. So that might mean how did you initially connect? That might mean, uh, you know, how have you communicated with them throughout the, the year or years? Uh, so that's kind of what I want to do. So is there one example that you want to start with that kind of sticks out? Um, yeah, I'm trying to think of which company. I mean, I usually go about it pretty similar to all of them. Um, these days, the easiest thing is to start social media, in my opinion. You can private message them, DM somebody, 
And if, if you don't go that route, we've met a lot of our sponsors at the track, which for instance, Oh, I can use a good example. Here's rigid industries. Mm -hmm. I really, really wanted lights for our car. I love their brand. And, and, you know, to be honest, I saw the following they had. And my initial thought was, well, not only do they make a great product, but if we get some photo time and, you know, media on their profile, we'll probably build our following, which in mm-hmm. return get sponsorships. Mm-hmm. So I contacted them, told them what we did very professionally and uh, spent, sent over a sponsor deck that I had and they loved it. We made a deal and that was in the beginning of the year. And basically following up every race is huge as far as keeping that relationship um i finally got to meet i think he steve was in charge at the time at the sand show i made sure made a point to go up to him as well as other sponsors that i have already met or have not met shake their hands tell them my name tell them what we do blah 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 and um yeah try to keep in contact with them and not only about racing too a big thing for me was uh contacting the sponsor just to say hey just to let them know like hey you know we're in the middle of our prep getting ready how's everything going with you you know how's the, how's the weather out there just making small talk it goes a long way to just call somebody as a friend and yes you are really friends but not everything's all about business you can have a relationship with a sponsor and not be hounding them for products or parts or money you can also have a regular relationship and see how their day's going the other week was how's the family you know what i mean mm-hmm. i mean i i completely completely get this and i support it quite a bit so one of the things i liked about what you're saying is you know you sought rigid for multiple reasons one you liked their product and two you felt that they had a strong social media following so I, what i want to highlight on that and this is for people listening to think about it's okay to be strategic like that. Some people will will yes. think, oh well, they've got a big following, and that'll be selfish if I, you know, get on board with that, and they're gonna help me. No, that's okay. That's kind of the point. Like you help them, they've helped you. It's a win win. That's okay. So <laughs> it's okay. Yeah. It's good. Uh, I've I but surprisingly enough, a lot of people listening are like, yeah, got it. But there's definitely people who I've talked to before. They're like. They just feel that that's wrong to promote themselves in any way. I'm like, no, that's it's not just promoting you. Like you're promoting the sport too, and you're promoting that sponsor. So it's okay exactly. to do that. Yeah. Um. Well, good, Danielle. What about you? I mean, you just picked up Polaris recently, and I don't know if that's uh that example might still be fresh in your head, but I don't know. Walk us through an example. Um. Yeah. So we took a year off of racing, just you know, like stuff and I was missing it like crazy and I mean I was talking to Mike about it one day and I was like okay you know I need help and I was tossing the idea around in my mind like you know well maybe I could email them and you know just see what they say and but I was honestly I was scared to do it because I was just nervous and I was like you know they have so many awesome people that are already sponsored by them and I was you know just kind of second guessing myself and Mike was like no he goes here's Craig Stanley's email just email him and I was like oh I don't want to bug him you know just kind of like being standoffish towards it and then finally I just kind of like thought okay I'm gonna email him and they're gonna help me or the worst that's gonna happen is he's gonna say I'm sorry we can't and I'm gonna be in the same exact place I am already and you know I'm just gonna have to figure other things out so I emailed him and, you know, within like a couple of days, I got a response of him telling me that uh, he would help me. And I, I think I even emailed him back. I was like, I could seriously cry right now. Thank you so much. So I was free. I was beyond words. I was freaking out. And, you know, I was just completely honest with him. I told him what was going on. I told him what I wanted to do. You know, I, I wasn't fabricating anything. I just said, you know, we this is why we took this last year off. You know, I hope you don't take it as a negative thing. And, you know, this is where I want to go. And I would love if you guys could help me out. And 
I think that he respected my honesty and, you know, just not trying to mess around with him or anything like that. And it just kind of worked out. And I'm still like on cloud nine because from the very beginning, I mean, it's kind of like the jackpot, like everyone racing the off-road industry, like your dream, your goal is to get with sponsored by, you know, a major a major company uh manufacturer Mm -hmm. and i mean like it finally happened and it and i honestly think it was just because i was honest and i just you know i just told him straight up like this is what it is well you have you have some championships to pick up your honesty (laughs) yes no i yeah but i mean you never know like you go looking for a job and you have so many years off from not working and their first question is well why weren't you working the last couple years you know so I mean, it was stressful and yes, I do have championships and, you know, different awards and stuff like that. But at that point, I'm, I was just thinking, well, they're only going to be looking at the fact that I didn't race the last year. Oh, yeah. And I kind of got a little bit about it. But, you know, once I put that aside, it just, you just got to kind of like go for it. And the worst thing that's going to happen is you're going to be in the exact same place you were before and you know, like maybe try again next season. And, you know, maybe at the time they're already filled up on budget or what it is, but unless it's a solid no, and which I've kind of learned from Mike along the way too, because I'm a little bit more shy and reserved and it's just like, you just got to go for it. And um, as scary as it can be, I mean, I look at where I am now. I, I wouldn't have pictured that I'd be here in a million years, and I'm super beyond grateful. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I think that's a great uh, a great story, and I just kind of want to pull out a few things. And actually, I want to pull out something that I meant to to mention earlier, and just didn't didn't quite get it all out. But you know, we, we you mentioned earlier about building uh, Mike. You talked about this about building a relationship of saying it's okay to talk about not just the business side of things with your sponsor. Like, yeah. That's good. I, yeah. I encourage that uh, for the same reason as if you're in a corporate environment, um, you know, or if you're just a, a part of any team. If you have, if you understand more about that person, you tend to trust them more, and the, you know they tend to trust you more. And that's what a, a relationship is built on is trust. That's one of the. That's exactly. actually the real foundation of it. And then it just reminded me of it, Danielle, when you talked about honesty, right? How that was was helpful, like. People will trust you if you say, "Look, here's exactly what happened. I didn't. I took off racing because I wanted to focus on my personal life for for a period of time, and you know now I'm ready to get back into it. And you know that if you would have said, "Oh yeah, well you know," and waffled around and said, eh, "I was thinking about this," or made some excuse, or I don't know something else other than the truth, you know they're gonna pick up on that. People pick up on that, and that that breaks down trust. Um, yeah, no, exactly. And it's like, I mean, we have, you know, Walker Evans is a great example. The Andersons, amazing yeah. family. And it started off with them as a sponsorship, but I mean, their entire family was at our wedding and, you know, whether, whether we'd be racing or not, those, that family will always be in our lives. And there's, you know, so many more of our sponsors where, you know, it's like, it's not, it's almost like we're family with them. It's just because of the years of, you know, exactly what Mike said, building relationships with them, you know, just not everything is business and racing, you know, like they're people just like you and I, and I think him and I both are super personable people. And, you know, I want to get to know who I'm working with. I want, you know, I want to know about their family. I want to know like what they're doing. And I think that's, honestly kind of helped us and it's helped us keep the sponsors that we have i mean i was more than half of our sponsors we've had since we started racing Mm -hmm. and i think you know just because of the relationships and you know how we are with them and i honestly you know they are part of the reason why i love racing you know and i'm grateful for them as well as other families that i've met in the industry Mm -hmm. yeah definitely and uh, something we've definitely said on this show before, which you started alluding to, Danielle, was kind of like that worst case, worst case scenario, right? I'm in the exact same boat that I'm in right now if I do nothing. Um, and, and what we've talked about on this show before is a quote, the answer is always no if you don't ask. 
you know, so you can ask, yeah. you can look like a fool and, and say no, but guess what? You're still in the same spot. That's okay. It's okay if sometimes you say something wrong and it's embarrassing or whatever. Most likely they're going to forget about that anyways, you know, as long as you get better and the next one is a, it works out. Uh, I know the next one will work out as long as you're focused on getting better. Well, and the good thing too, it's like you make an introduction, even if they say no, yeah, they might cross a magazine or a results page and see your name and be like, wow, I talked to that person. I remember them. Mm-hmm. You know, just, it's kind of like your little, you know, maybe you'll be a bug in their ear. I don't know. It's just yeah. try to start a relationship. And we too, we've had a sponsor before where, you know, they they had a bad year and, you know, they were super nice to us. Like, you know, we're so sorry. Like, you know, we hope that you'll still rep us, but, you know, we we just at this point can't help you with anything. And I think, you know, just the fact that we're like, of course we will, you know, stayed loyal to them and, you know, still promoted their products and everything. You know, the next year they got on their feet and, you know, they were able to help us out with more than they were before. And I think it's just like a respect level two. Yeah, and that's, that could, I mean, we might be able to unpack that a little bit more too, because my next question is really going to be, a time when things didn't go with it well with a sponsor and you know, how do you handle that situation? So in this case, you know, I would imagine that is a not good thing. Someone says, Hey, we were planning on supporting you or we used to, and then guess what? It's not going to work this year. Will you still put in the time and put in the effort? You know, just like Mike was saying before, this stuff does take time. All of a sudden you realize a year is gone. <laughs> uh, yeah. But like, you know, you in in this case, it sounds like you continue to promote them, commu- continue to uh, to to keep them as part of your communication plan, and then you know, a year later, it came back. Yeah. Yeah, and and obviously, uh, anybody's logo. I mean, technically, it's taking up real estate. Yeah. But even if it's just a little logo on the car, and they're giving you. You know, less than they were before, just having that loyalty can go a long way. Mm-hmm. You know, it, there's a fine line between, like, taking up real estate that can make you money or keeping, you know, a good relationship that could end up benefiting you in the future. Right, right. Um, no, that's good. That's good. Um, have any other things like that? Any other examples where maybe the pitch didn't go well or, I don't know, you had a conflict or... I don't know. Any other examples? <laughs> I got a really good one. So, oh, perfect. <laughs> so uh, when we were newer to racing, we're probably a year or two into it at this point, And I had, I think we had, well, we at the time, we had two or three technically conflicting sponsors. We are using different products, but you go on the webpage and they all pretty much make the same thing, yeah. right? So... It's, you know, the stressful time of the year is December, and I'm in the talks with a company about doing a pretty good size money deal for next year. And in the meantime, I already have sponsors confirmed for next year, so I'm already posting about them. And apparently, I posted too much about the other sponsor who Um. we were, who technically was a conflicting sponsor. And it literally went from a phone call at 10 a.m. saying we're ironing it out right now to about 4 p.m. later that night. It was an email saying, sorry, um, here's how we feel or here's what we feel happened. And we feel like we're second string. Wow. And hopefully we can work together in the future. Yeah. <laughs> so, that and that was that was a pretty hard blow, you yeah. know, it's like, cause in our eyes, we're using, you know, completely different products yeah. from both companies. We're not using the same from both companies. So, you know, we didn't really realize that it was as conflicting as it was. So yeah. when we heard that we were both just kind of like, wow, I, you know, it was, we're we taken, didn't expect that. Taken back for sure. But you learn from stuff like that. I mean, A, having 
multiple conflicting sponsors could definitely put you in a sticky situation like that. Mm-hmm. And B, just I, try to simplify things, I guess, and put it in, you know, simple words. But, um, yeah, I, I don't know if I offended them or what, but I, I don't know. It was a big, uh, it was a big setback for sure. So I'm not. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to tread lightly ever since I've tread lightly just to make sure something like that doesn't happen again. Yeah. I can't stress this one enough. I'm, I'm, I'm so glad you brought it up. It is, it's not always easy to tell who competes and who doesn't. Um, yeah. especially when, when sponsors develop new products, right? Mm-hmm. There's companies out yeah. there that are diversifying all the time. And, you know, let's say, Let's say a tire manufacturer. Uh, I'm just going to make up an example here. I don't, I don't, I don't think that this has happened that I'm aware of. But let's say there's a tire manufacturer that only makes uh, street tires initially, right? Yeah. And you're sponsored then by, uh, as a UTV racer, you're sponsored by a different company. Let's say it's G, uh, uh, GBC, right? So you're sponsored by GBC, mm-hmm. and then there's another company that that you've used for your car, okay? Then yeah. GBC decides we're going to release a new tire for passenger cars or for, let's say, you have a drift car or something like that. And then you're like, oh, so I'm running this other this other car. I was thinking about racing that. What do you do now? Like, do you do you switch your standard car vehicle over to the GBC new, new tire? Uh, or do you run them both? And if you do end up getting sponsored with your drift car, do you promote them both, even though it's different? sectors i don't know it's it's a tough deal stuff like that and that it does and especially with that communication is huge yeah Yeah. i was gonna say communication is everything and just like it is in our relationship (laughs) but no like i mean just being honest and you know if if you hear from a company that, you know, they announce in two weeks they're coming out with a similar product product from another company that you're already sponsored by, I mean, a phone call isn't going to hurt you just to call the other company and be like, hey, just a heads up, you know, this is what's going on. I just want to, you know, know both of you guys' thoughts and feelings. And, I, you know, I just want to, you know, see what you would be comfortable with and without us doing. Right. It, it really it really throws you in a pickle when you have a wheel sponsor and then you have a tire sponsor. Yeah. Well, when that wheel sponsor ends up making tires, yeah, <laughs> yeah, and then they can throw you into a pickle come sponsor season. That's a perfect example. Way better than my convoluted example where I was just trying to make something <laughs> no. up. But yeah, that's you make, it's very legitimate. You make yeah, it's very very legitimate. I was I I mean I think of two. How many companies out there are custom fab shops, right? And mm-hmm. you know, you might be getting a bumper from from somebody, and then your custom fab shop only does cages, and then they decide they're going to expand into bumpers. You know, oh, and you're like, yeah. what the heck am I going to do? Yep, we had a situation like that too, and it's it's tough. It's it's almost impossible to please everybody, no yeah. matter what you do. Yeah, yeah, like I, making. Sh- mm. The communication is good. is pretty uh, pretty important. Like Danielle was saying earlier, I mean, you gotta you gotta be honest at that point. You have to say, "This is what I see. What do you like? What do you propose doing?" I would I would encourage having them be part of the solution. Um, or if you have your own solution, great, propose that. Yeah, exactly. That's kind of what I was just gonna say, but yeah. <laughs> great minds think alike. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they do. <laughs> uh, well, hey, that's that is a, that's a great example. I I really hope that. Actually, I'm not just gonna say hope. If you're listening right now, I want you to sit down after this is done and look at your sponsors that you currently have, and just do a quick analysis. Just check it out. Maybe you have to go to some websites and see what people are offering. But see if there's a conflict because you might be in this situation right now and you don't even know it. I can I can throw a little a little mystery out there. Yeah. <laughs> I know dozens of people that are in the same boat that I, we were in and they don't even they might not even know it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, it's but again, yeah. like as long as you're just up front with people and talk to them and figure it out, I mean it might even work in your favor. You might end up getting more. Yeah. yeah. The phone call goes a very long way. Yeah, definitely. And uh you know, one of the things, Mike, I think that you had said uh was you may need to look at simplifying, right? If you do have multiple sponsors that, that compete you know, it could be really tough to break those relationships, especially if you have, you know, a long-standing relationship with somebody. But there is some advantage to simplification in terms of being able to provide one sponsor to a little bit more value, or because they get a little bit more of your attention. The downside, mm-hmm. though, is that it does now increase a little bit of your risk if that sponsor is no longer able to support in the future. Um, sure. But I know uh, Tony Jenkins, he's a backcountry snowmobiler. He was on episode, I think it was 19, um, which was, gosh, a long time ago. I think this one, when I end up releasing, it's going to be like 102. But uh, either way, he talked about doing that process where he used to have a gear um, supporter, then a hel- you know, like a jacket supporter, and then a helmet supporter, and then a goggle supporter, and then a mm-hmm. machine support. He had all these different things. And he linked up with Skidoo, you know, and he basically went to all Skidoo products. So he runs the Skidoo helmets and the Skidoo jackets and Skidoo everything. He said, yeah, yeah. I, he said it was tough because he had to narrow down his, his, his sponsors from, I don't know what he had before, 15 to like six total. Yeah. And, um, but he's like, I give everything now to Skidoo and, you know, and, and they, they return the favor. Yeah, that's uh, that's a pretty good example. Going from fourteen to six, that's a that's a big jump. Yeah, it was it was massive, but you know, Skidoo and just like a, a number of OEMs uh, in in the snowmobiling world, they offer all of their own versions of gear and things like that. So, and even aftermarket, you know, like for example, mm-hmm. Polaris, right? Polaris makes their own aftermarket bumpers. Um, oh yeah, you know and. And there's plenty of other companies that make aftermarket bumpers. So if you went all Polaris stuff, maybe they're not set up for racing. But you know, you have to make you you yeah. could make that decision. Um, yeah, I mean they do cages now. They do yeah bead lock. You really could. It, it's almost like a one stop shop. But you're right. Like it's, uh, it seems like a lot of the companies are have that option. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, that was really good examples. Um, well, what I want to talk about next briefly here is uh, social media. You know, social media is a it's a big thing. Um, now, one thing I'll just call out before I ask you the the open ended question. Uh, one thing I like that you two do is you play off of each other's social media. So, like, mm-hmm. you know, sometimes because I I follow both of you and you know. And every before I do an interview with somebody, I like to go through and do a deeper dive into how they how they do their their social media. And sometimes you you can't tell which profile you're looking at. You know, if you just read the yeah. captions and just look at the pictures, it you, you have an integrated your your integrated lifestyle comes out, and it's it's kind of fun to look at and know like oh well these two actually spend a lot of time with each other and they actually rely on each other. It seems like they actually like each other, you know. And, yeah. <laughs> But it's kind of cool to see that. So, but so, uh, given that little intro there, I mean, what what kind of is your social media strategy? Well, I'll I'll kind of touch on what you just brought up. It kind of goes back to not just being strictly business with your sponsors. Well, I kind of look at social media the same way. Like the the main goal for me, and I'm sure anybody else, is to keep your followers excited and interested in the next thing. Mm-hmm. Well, if you keep posting the same berm shot or the same jump, it obviously is kind of going to, uh, you know, make them lose interest. So I, I always think that doing some lifestyle photos with yourself, your dogs, you know, camping, just kind of mixing it up because it, it not only is it your real life or as real as you want to make it seem, but it makes other people, they, they can relate to you in another way, not just by racing. Like, oh, I love the camp too. Wow, the gardeners like the camp. That's really cool. You know, I yeah. I like to kind of I like to kind of mix it up a little bit and not be so in your face about racing, racing, racing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I mean, I just 
I honestly just have fun with mine. I mean, I'll post a picture of my dog wearing a helmet and goggles mm-hmm. to, you know, me jumping a tabletop to photos of family and friends. And I just kind of use it for my all around, you know, just like Mike said, all around racing lifestyle, everything. I don't make it just, you know, one specific thing because it's kind of crazy, you know, like messages and DMs that we get just based off of, you know, like lifestyle stuff, like, oh my gosh, you know, I'm, you know, small example, you got your eyelashes done here, I want to go here, or, you know, I have have a golden retriever too, or, you know, things like that. I mean, it kind of makes you, you know, just interested and keep on your toes a little bit. And just, it's like you're following, it's kind of like, you know, me, I feel like I know people from social media, just from following them on Instagram. And I haven't even met them in real life yet. We Mm -hmm. could be best friends because I already know them. And, you know, those people I continue to follow because I'm like, we like the same things, you know, like they will post funny videos and, you know, I meet them in real life. I'm like, I already feel like I know you. Like, how are you? Give me a hug. (laughs) It is so weird, but so true. Um, I, so with the people that I spend a lot of my time with at work and, and they're not as big in the social media as I am. And, I'll tell people this this story, and I purposely exaggerate a little bit, but you know, I'll I'll be like, someone say, hey, well, what's a cool vacation you went on? Like, oh, well, yeah, I met a guy online and went out and rode snowmobiles with him, and they're like, what? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, he's yeah. I just met him online, and I just went out and like we got a a a cabin together, and like I I used his twenty thousand dollar snowmobile to to ride in the mountains, and they're like what what are you talking about i was like yeah and i legitimately had no concerns about going out there and doing it because i knew him so well on social media better than this person who's sitting right across me like i know yeah. him better than you it's so weird it's oh, it's gosh. crazy so 10 weird. 15 years you'd be crazy to do something like yeah. that but today it's the norm it yeah it, it's like i don't know and and for the most part, Instagram is mostly positivity. Like very rarely are people, yeah. you know, talking negativity. And so usually when you're relating to somebody, it's about something positive. So that makes the relationship even better. Yeah. I feel like I have to do a little public service announcement though here for the kids listening. Don't go and meet mm-hmm. people that uh, don't go meet people face to face that you just met online. I'm exaggerating this, yeah. ser- this, this scenario. Like this person was, his name's Curtis Fernie. He's a he's a backcountry snowmobiler. Like we talk, he sponsored me for a long time. We had spent a lot of time on the phone and and online. And like he was a, le- I vetted the person out as a legitimate person. Plus, I'm an adult. If you're a kid, absolutely, absolutely yeah. not. Don't engage in this activity whatsoever. Uh, yeah, <laughs> so, you want your parents involved, one hundred percent. Yeah, and when I say that I met people in person that I felt like I already met. Like these were women in the racing industry as well, who, you know, we took a year off of racing. There was a lot more people that came into the work series when we weren't there. So from me just following them, you know, like I met a lot of them for the first time at our last race in May, but you know, they're in the same industry and in racing. And, you know, like I said, I already felt like we were best friends, but that was just, you know, they're in the same sport and industry and, know the same people that i know and mm-hmm. we're old enough yeah yeah have the right <laughs> yeah sorry i had to throw <laughs> that that psa out there real quick uh but i will give another example you know i uh i went to vegas Torino last year and you know i've been pretty transparent on this show that i like when i started the show i didn't know anything about any of this stuff i mean i knew that i love snowmobiles and i love four-wheelers and side-by-sides and i love business and that was it like all this other stuff i'm learning and I, yeah. I had, at that point I had been doing the podcast for like nine months and I'd gotten to know a lot of people. I'd interviewed a uh, number, like I've interviewed at that point, Sierra Romo. And, mm-hmm. you know, we went out to the Vegas Reno and I see her in with Caden Danbury and I'm like, holy cow, I know both of you. This is so cool. Yeah. And like, we immediately, it was like, we were all each other's, you know, fans and we're like, let's do pictures and let's hug and like, let's high five and <laughs> like, it's so weird that that happens. But I have that happens con- constantly, you know. And I'm going out there again this year. Well, I guess in a couple, shoot, next week. Wow, 
next week I'll be out yeah. there. And I got people like, oh, yeah, I'll see you there. Like, man, that's weird. What a world we live in. Yeah, it's, it's like the it's like interacting with sponsors over email. Like you finally get to meet them yeah. at an event and put a face to the person you've been talking to for the last year. Right, right. It's good. What a world that we live in. What a, This is such a good time to be – in motorsports and in sponsorship, like you, the the opportunities now versus ten years ago are they're they're just limitless. It's crazy. Completely limitless. I agree one hundred percent. You guys, you guys got me all all passionate over here. I'm getting all shaky and <laughs> juice bumpy. Yeah, when I when I tell people like it, you know, and that that like my parents or whoever my wife about this stuff, they're like, "What? Why do you get so excited about this stuff?" I'm like, I don't know. It's cool, but yeah, it is. It's fun. No, it's very cool. Um, well, you know what else is cool? The fact that we have gone through this entire interview, covered pretty much everything that I wanted to cover. Um, and we only had two big technical difficulties that hopefully the audience, uh, hopefully yeah. I clean it up enough where they don't even notice it, but, uh, perfect. Uh, and possibly a third that I hope you didn't hear yeah. because we had a massive spider <laughs> on our, both of us freaked out. So if you hear some banging, like somewhere in the podcast, that's what that is. I did not <laughs> that hear that. That was a sandal smacking the spider and him picking it up with a spoon and then running over to the trash can. <laughs> that is hilarious. So and I'm right with you. I hate spiders. But I'll tell you what was happening oh. here. I am I know people won't hear this one because the way – when it happened, it's time where I, I, I deaden the sound so, like, you won't hear it. But we got a new cat yesterday. And uh. I am not a cat <laughs> fan. Like I'm an Arctic cat fan, but not a like actual physical cat, cat. like a meow yeah. cat fan. Either way, we got this cat and it's eight, eight weeks old. And I've got a 110 pound German shepherd. Who's just a doll, but cool. the, the cat hates the dog. That's really the problem. And he'll swat at him and like claw him. <laughs> and, uh, you know, so twice, and they were right above me. I, I, you know, I record my basement, which is not soundproof, you know, and they're right above me. And I heard my dog like stomp on the ground and bark at him like three times. And I jumped like, Whoa. So <laughs> people won't hear that, awesome. but it's, it, it happened. It's, it, it happened. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, this, like this guy was like the size of a half dollar. I was freaking, and I was talking to you, telling you a story. I was, it, it took everything in me not to just like <laughs> freak out and yell. Oh. <laughs> That's good times. That's good times. Uh, well, I would have understood because spiders are horrible. Um, they are. Yeah, they. They. I. I do not like spiders. I'll take a snake. No spider. Any day. Oh. Mm-mm. No snake, spider. Cat. I don't care. You put a spider in front of me, I'm. I'm gone. Yep. I like freak. I like can't breathe. I don't like them. Yep. I'm the. I'm the same way. Well, this has nothing to do with spiders, but it's time to wrap up. <laughs> What's the best way for people listening to connect with you? Uh, definitely Instagram, I think. Um, GMH Motorsports, and then mine's underscore Danielle Gardner underscore. We do we do stuff on Facebook as well, um, but I would say the majority of our you know posts and everything are Instagram. Yeah, sounds good. Instagram has taken over the motorsports world, no doubt. It's crazy how popular Instagram has become on in motorsports. I run polls quite a bit to try to see what's popular, and that's it's definitely taken the reins. Yeah, yeah, there's you go on Facebook, and there's like if you're friends with a thousand people, eight hundred of them are political experts. Yeah. So. <laughs> so it's like i don't even really i go on facebook but it's like as far as promoting stuff it's like unless you're talking about politics no one seems to care it is is honestly kind of pushed away from it yeah and that you made a comment earlier too about instagram having a lot of positivity um i think that's one of the elements there's it's not really set up for debate the same way as facebook like facebook i think is intended for you to to create a conversation within a post and have it like be very clear to follow and Instagram's not like that. And sometimes I'm like, Oh, this is so great to just not like my wife can handle all that stuff. She's really good at, uh, deciphering social trends and like political trends. 
I get my information from her, <laughs> and then she can tell me, like, here's what one side of the story is baiting, here's the other side, and I'm like, good. I don't have to actually see it anywhere. I just see all the people yeah. racing and doing fun, cool stuff that I like on social media, and she can break down all the other things that I need to understand in life, but that's helpful. Uh, well, hey, now, though, we have to close things out, so I really appreciate this. I thought it was a, a really good time. Uh, I, I definitely like that you brought up, um, you know, we talked about honesty. You talked about championships, right? That's still important, folks. Winning is still a big yeah. part of this whole thing. Um, you no, know, it after- is. <laughs> Winning it, you're all not giving up and yeah. just it's, going for it. It's still important. And, uh, you know, managing conflict with sponsors, I, th- I thought it was a great topic. But, you know, all things, all good things must come to an end, and that's where we're at. So I'm going to leave you with this. Have fun and ride safe. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Sponsored Rider Club Podcast, which is powered by Amsoil. Be sure to subscribe. That way you don't miss any of our upcoming shows. We actually have Keegan Kincaid and a Heyday special coming up next. Also, head over to iTunes. Leave that rating and review. And make sure you're following us on social media. You can find us on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. And I want you to specifically pay attention to our Facebook page. That's where we do our live shows. So John Farian is coming up next. So right after our Heydays event is through on September 10th, 2018, John Farian is going to be coming on 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific. To get insider access to upcoming guests, go ahead and check out the Sponsored Rider Club on Facebook. That's also where you can ask questions, you know, learn and share best practices. So it's a good resource in addition to this show. A special thanks goes out to our sponsors, Amsoil, Armor Coat, Solder Weld, Bold Racing, TopThePodium.com, Crash Addict Industries, Racing Addicts, and then also our other partners, GSP XTV Axles, MBRP, HMK USA, Studboy Traction, and One Stop Performance. I look forward to serving you again next week. Until then, have fun and ride safe.